When the 2017 Booker Lawn List was announced, I speculated that Lincoln and the Bardo will win this year's prize. I'm not so sure anymore. Uh, more on that in a minute. Uh, but at the time, the writer Stuart Evers responded to my prediction on Twitter, betting me a drink that George Saunders wouldn't even make this year's shortlist. Well, I'll have a passion fruit mojito, please. <laughs> Hi, book buddies. I'm Eric from Lonesome Reader, and the 2017 Booker shortlist has been announced, and what a surprise. Honestly, with so many big names and impressive novels on the long list, who would have thought that both debut writers, Emily Fridland and Fiona Mosley, would make the shortlist? And uh, of course, George Saunders is a debut novelist as well, but he was already a much lauded writer. And who would have thought that three Americans would would be on the list, especially Paul Auster's mammoth novel, which seems to have received equal parts praise and criticism. I think it's a really exciting shortlist, and I'm really tired of people who dismiss book lists as boring or predictable. I don't necessarily think that these are the best books published all year, uh, but a group of really smart bookish people have sat down and put this list together. Even if you already have read all the books on the shortlist, maybe these books deserve a closer look. Personally, I think the fact that a lot of the books on the shortlist are quite experimental in form is quite exciting. Although I've been reading diligently since the long list was announced, I've uh, still not read three of the books on the shortlist. Well, I've, I've, I've read uh, almost all of one of them. I gave breakdowns of all the novels on the long list in a previous video, so I'm not going to talk too much about them here. These are just my brief thoughts on the shortlist. I've since read Elmet, which is a fascinating story about a father and his two children living in isolation in rural England. It's small in focus, but it says something much bigger about the way that the majority of people are crushed beneath capitalism. It shows the consequences of splintering away from mainstream society for one motherless family, saying something unique about gender roles in the characters of the brother and the sister, and builds to a fantastically tense climax. And I'm very close to finishing History of Wolves. This is another story which is very bleak in tone about a girl who belongs to a family uh, that lives on the outside of the mainstream. But it's a more meditative novel about a girl reflecting on a particular time in her past when she became very attached to a neighboring family uh, who has a stricken son. Comparisons have been made between Fridland and the genius writer Marilyn Robinson. I can understand that connection because Fridland in a similar way shows the way that our identities transform and are shaped by the encounters we have with people who are most important to us in our lives. But Fridlin's character of Linda, uh, who also goes by other names, is more bitingly sarcastic. Her past gathers a powerful weight as she obsesses over details and a tense mystery of a boy's death unfolds. So ridiculously, I've still not read Hamid's novel Exit West, and I say ridiculously because when it came out, uh, Anna James had read it and she praised it really highly, and other people I know uh, were all reading it, uh, but I didn't get around to reading it. It's just one of those books, I think, that, you know, I, I really, really want to get to, uh, but for some reason it just stays on my TBR pile for ages. This is a love story which I've heard is quite fantastical in its structure, and in doing so makes a statement about the refugee experience. So I'm making a promise now that I'm definitely, definitely, definitely gonna read it uh, before before the winner of the prize is announced. And I've still not read Auster's 880 page novel, though I heard him read from it earlier this year. And I'm definitely compelled by the way he constructs a character in this story, showing four distinct paths in his life, alternate paths that he could have taken in his life. It seems to really embody Auster's obsession with chance and how our fates can be so easily steered one way or the other. So yes, of course, I'm slightly intimidated by the size of the novel, although so ridiculously, I've uh, instead I've been reading this mammoth. One, almost 1,000 page uh, book that was written in the 1300s instead. That's what I've also been reading this month. But with Auster's novel, I think instead of reading the physical book, I'm gonna get it on audiobook, and I don't often get audiobooks, but I've heard really good things about this one. Matthew Sharapa has been recommending it, and on his channel, he often makes comparisons between the audiobook experience and reading the physical text. I think it really does change the way you experience the story 
of a book. But a really good thing about the audiobook for 4321 is that Oster reads it himself, uh, so I'd be curious to hear the whole novel in his own voice. And of course, it probably means that I'll get through the book a lot faster than if I'd try to read just the physical text. Now, I read George Saunders' novel earlier this year, and I loved this incredible, twisted, oddball tale of Abraham Lincoln mourning his son in a graveyard and the spirits who surround the boy. And it's a novel that I really want to re-experience as an audiobook. I sound like I keep going on about audiobooks, but I'm really not sponsored by Audible or anything like that. But this novel was famously made into an audiobook with a plethora of famous actors and writers like David Sedaris, Lena Dunham, the goddess Julianne Moore, Don Cheadle, Miranda July, Susan Sarandon, George Saunders himself, and many other people playing the huge cast of characters that are in this novel. It sounds like such a unique experience and I'm so up for listening to it. I especially encourage anyone who's really put off by the strange structure and style of the novel at the beginning uh, to really stick with it. I've heard about so many people who have put it aside after only like 20 pages because they found it really irritating. But honestly, stick with it and you will sink into its hypnotic wonder. So finally, there's Ali Smith, whose writing I love so much. And and you know what? I'm changing my mind. I think Autumn might be the novel that'll win this year's Booker. In this story, Smith continues with her persistent themes about language, identity, nature, storytelling, but also places it solidly in our present time, connecting the massively destabilizing event of Brexit in the UK uh, with Shakespearean and mythic literary tropes. It's a novel that when I first read it last year, it compelled me to go outside and interview a tree about it if you want to go back and watch my October reading wrap up. But I feel that politics is really going to steer this year's prize. And obviously this book really engages with politics in a highly artistic way and shows that how we've become quite a fractious and divided society and suggests ways that we can sort of connect back together. But of course you could argue that George Saunders' novel is also highly political, turning the historical novel on its head by betraying this political leader. So I think it's going to be a really close call between these two novels. But what do you think? Who do you think will win? It could be Giovanni Boccaccio, that writer from the 1300s that straddled the medieval and the Renaissance. I mean, who knows? Anything could happen. But let me know if you've read many books on the shortlist, or are you planning to? Also, who do you think was scandalously left off? I really wish that the Irish writers Mike McCormick and Sebastian Barry were on the shortlist. Uh, also, Colson Whitehead. But you know, as much as I really love these three books, they've all already won major awards, so maybe it is best that other books get the spotlight. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below and we can have a chat. I hope you're well and I'll speak to you again soon. Happy reading!